fans, welcome back to 237 back with another review. And this is actually a random review because I was not expecting to find this uh, on one of my recent trips to the store. Uh, it, it is one that I've looked for for quite a while. I'm not sure if the availability is as big as it used to be. It's kind of a hard to find film. But uh, we're going back to some familiar ground because this is an Italian horror film. If you follow my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of Italian horror films. I reviewed almost 200 at this point. Uh, last year I did like a six to eight month Italian marathon doing horror and giallo films. And this is one by Lucio Fulci, who, you know, one of the biggest Italian horror filmmakers. Uh, I would say he's one of the big three with him, Argento, and Baba. I've already reviewed 14 of his films, so this is number 15. And no, it's not Zombie 3, which is one I do need to get. So I've reviewed all his Gialli, almost all his horror films. But this is part of his later career. He passed away in 1996. And from like 90 on, or around 88 on, it seemed to he seemed to do like direct-to-video films and TV movies that actually got released uh, posthumously. Uh, this one did not. And it's one I've heard a lot of people talk about, and I've never been able to find it. And sadly, this would have worked better as his final film. He did do a few more after this, but just the way this plays out and even the concept itself, I think this would have been a great swan song for Lucio Fulci. And technically, I don't even, technically I guess it is an original film just because of the way it's arranged, but it's his 1990 film, A Cat in the Brain, which I've always heard about. I've always known about this for as long as I've known about Fulci, you know, over a decade or so. But I've never been able to find this. And it usually goes for, even the DVD is like over 30, 40 bucks online. I found this for like 10. And yes, this is from Grindhouse Releasing, which I, I always love their releases. They don't have too many out. But unfortunately, I did buy this used, so it didn't come with a poster. You know, like the pieces one here, or... The one I have for the Beyond, I Drink Your Blood, Cannibal Holocaust, and Cannibal Ferox. So, no poster with this. And really, aside from this and Zombie 3, I think the only other real horror films he has would be like Touch of Death, which is prominent in this. Ghosts of Sodom. And then he did like some TV movies, like I think it's called House of Clocks or Door into Silence. Uh... He did do a bunch of, I don't even know if they're on DVD or, or if you can even find them. But I have reviewed all his Gialli. Uh, I have a whole playlist of Lucio Fulci films, a playlist of Italian horror films, and a playlist of Gialli. This is not a Giallo. I've heard people call it that. This is a horror film. So, uh, <clears throat> Directed by Lucio Fulci. It's been called like the horror movie equivalent of Fellini's Eight and a Half. Because it's like a movie about filmmaking, I guess. I wouldn't say it's that with quality. Certainly not. It's closer to like Wes Craven's New Nightmare as far as concept. Which I do believe, I, I have read somewhere, that four years later after this, when Wes Craven's New Nightmare came out, Fulci saw it and he said, I already did this four years ago. Because the concept, before I get into how this movie was made the concept is Fulci plays himself a fictionalized exaggerated version of himself working on two films at the same time touch of death and ghost of sodom which were i think just recently released before this one like just prior to this i i haven't seen either one but the line between Filmmaking and reality are starting to blur, and he's starting to hallucinate uh, some of the gruesome gore death scenes from his films, and he's starting to believe that he is a maniac killer. And pretty much the whole film, if it's not showing him on the set shooting a scene, 
which it does put footage from Touch of Death and Ghost of Sodom, along with a few other films that aren't necessarily Fulci films, but he worked with uh, Leandro Luchetti, who I believe he was... Okay, doesn't even say... For some reason, I was thinking uh, Vincenzo Tomasi, because he was the one that uh, uh, edited this film together. But it features footage from uh, Leandro... Oh, films that Fulci supervised, I guess, like Leandro Luchetti's Bloody Psycho, Giovanni Simonelli's uh, Hansel A. Gretel, uh, Andre Bianchi's Massacre, and Mario Bianchi's Murder Secret. I haven't seen any of those films, but mostly, most prominently, it's uh, Sodoma's Ghost. I don't know why I've been saying Ghost of Sodom. Uh, I know that's another film. <laughs> uh, Sodoma's Ghost and Touch of Death, which both came out in 1988. So that's most of the footage that's shown in this. Now, I have read that almost the entire film is footage from those two and others, but Tomasi was able to rearrange everything and make a completely different film now as but it says the wraparound is original so i don't know if that means the opening shot of him at a desk and the closing shot of him on his boat which is called perversion named after perversion story his first giallo and i i don't know if the boat was a reference to zombie because the boat kind of looks like the boat from zombie now, it said wraparound was original footage, but I don't know if it means just that or everything, you know, uh, everything else with Fulci. Like him hallucinating, everything with his psychiatrist, his cop friend, you know, everything but the hallucinations. I assumed that's all original to the film. I'm not quite sure. But, yeah, I haven't seen any of the movies that this shows in his hallucinations or the kill scenes i would love to because <clears throat> because they look gory as hell they look like classic fulci and i'm sure some people will call this like a fulci compilation or like a best of but that's not really the case because it, it doesn't have clips from all his films just touch of death and sodoma's ghost probably because that plays into the plot and then apart from him working on these two films and then hallucinating the scenes and thinking he's going crazy, thinking he's killing people, it does kind of play on the idea of what doing and watching horror films would do to your psyche. You know, like New Nightmare would go on to do, like Scream would go on to do. Even his psychiatrist says, you know, oh, it's an identity crisis. And I like how whenever there's exposition, the camera zooms right into the character's mouth as if to really drive home the exposition. I'm surprised modern horror films don't do that. <clears throat> but then the psychiatrist, there's a scene where he says, well, I've watched all your films, read all the scripts, looked at all the stills and you know, cover art, whatever. And I can definitely see why this would mess with your psyche. He puts Fulci under hypnosis and... Tell him, like, yes, you're going to continue having these hallucinations. You're going to believe they're real. You're going to believe you're committing these crimes. So that I, now, now that I'm a killer, it doesn't say if he was a killer prior to watching these films or after. I'm assuming after to play in with the, the whole concept of what horror films will do to the psyche. And then he just goes on a, a killing spree. I will admit he does look kind of silly because his outfit is like... A windbreaker with the hood like pulled tight and he's always just like and every time he goes around killing people it's like because the music is done by uh, uh, Fab Fabio Fritzi who has done a number of Fulci films I believe that's how you pronounce his name but uh yeah he, he, uh, I think he's done, like, all Fulci's major films. Fritzy, excuse me. Fabio Fritzy. It's like a Fabio Fritzy version of Edward Grieg's In the Hall of the Mountain King. 
So whenever he's going around killing people, you you just hear like. But like Italian music. <clears throat> That's really the plot. I mean, and then the hallucinations and being able to tell, uh, you know, working on a set and reality gets more and more blurred. And I was, some of the effects, uh, I, and again, I don't know if this entire movie is from these two films and completely rearranged or if everything with the psychiatrist and pertaining to the plot itself is all original footage for this. I assume it is. I figure like all the kill scenes and everything was from those films. Like I, <clears throat> I know the one involving the, the cannibal, the the opening one is from Touch of Death, which those effects are kind of wonky. And I don't know if the wonky effects are to like show that this is a film, but then the effects get better to help blur the lines, or if that's just how it worked out. Because some of these effects are pretty gnarly. And probably some of the best I've seen in a Fulci film. But like, <clears throat> I know there's a scene with like a Nazi orgy. Which is from Sodoma's Ghost. Uh, I believe Touch of Death also had the scene when he envisions running over the, the drifter. Which is an obvious stand-in for Charles Manson. I mean, long-haired, dirty, hippie drifter. He's got, I believe it's the Omega symbol, like the circle with the legs tattooed on his forehead. Runs over him a shit ton of times. <clears throat> and it just gets to the point where he doesn't know, it starts to believe he actually is committing these crimes when the psychiatrist is going around doing it. Really, the only other thing to talk about would just be like the, the hallucinations, the gore seeds, because a lot of them are pretty awesome. Oh, and I guess it's called Cat in the Brain because one of the opening scenes is with this fake cat with paws kind of digging into this pile of meat that looks like brains. But uh, <clears throat> some of the set pieces, like when he stumbles upon the set for uh, Sonoma's ghost in a, a cemetery, the way it's lit reminded me of Creep Show, you know, with all these zombies or creatures peeking around mausoleums with like harsh blue lights but they're like in a harsh red light reminded me of creep show there's this great scene where he envisions a woman like being drowned in a fountain and getting her tongue ripped out uh he puts leftovers in a microwave but he sees like this head in the microwave that just melts i really like the effects for that one of his neighbors is in a wheelchair, but he envisions like some corpse in a wheelchair getting thrown down the steps. A lot of great set pieces. And I was thinking, you know, is this, was this kind of an idea or an excuse to just put a bunch of like murder set pieces in one film and then just tool it around for this concept? And I mean, if you want to see a Fulci film just for gore, you pretty much can't beat this. I mean, probably just by sheer volume, this is probably his goriest, bloodiest film. I think the gnarliest effect was when he sees this dead body lying on his floor. And it shows these close-ups of just these fluids like oozing out of the body, almost like a bloated, decomposing body with gross colors. The blue looked a little fake, but like the green and the brown just bubbling and oozing out of them like a body they pulled out of the water. That was pretty gross. And then it just has like this mass just kind of pulsating out of them. That looked awesome. <clears throat> and, you know, you got your typical weird character moments, which some of his hallucinations we don't actually see what he sees. Like, he goes in for a televised interview, but he sees the guy with the camera, and then he just envisions this Nazi orgy. And there's always these close-ups of him giving direction, as if he's directing his own hallucination. But we don't see what he's actually doing in that room. 
his assistant just pulls him out and, and he's like, you, you attacked the cameraman? And he tried to rip the interviewer's clothes off. Go in there and apologize. And since it, it's an Italian film, you get kind of weird character moments where he apologizes. She's like, that was such a thrill. <laughs> like, it's weird. And since it's an Italian film, you get to see a kid get killed. He wants to go confess to his cop buddy. He goes into his house and he just sees his family get murdered, including his young son riding around on a bike. All of a sudden, chainsaw comes out. Not only does it decapitate him, and we see the head roll in slow motion, but we get a shot of his foot, just kind of like his dying moment. You don't really see that in American films, but uh, 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 Italian movies... They'll kill a kid. I believe that was from Touch of Death as well. But there are some great shots. Like when we see uh, the psychiatrist towards the end. Killing this one woman with a scythe. It's just up close with just solid black in the background. The scythe blade coming in. You just get that glare off the shiny metal. In slow motion. And then it comes up. There's blood all over it. Some really cool looking shots. And then, of course, also, since it's an Italian film, you get kind of a convenient wraparound, uh, wrap-up, or like a convenient ending, where Fulci sees this, he passes out, and then when he wakes up, and his cop friend is there, there's a dead body, he's like, I swear I'm innocent, I didn't do this. And the cop picks him up, he's like, don't worry, we know. Pretty much saying, like, uh, when I got your call saying that you wanted to confess something and you went to my house, uh, I figured something was up. So we had your psychiatrist. Uh, so we had you followed. We saw the psychiatrist. We saw him kill someone. He tried to run. And then he tried to shoot one of our officers, so we shot him. We don't see any of that. They just explain it, and that's how they wrap up the story. It, spoilers for the final twist, which... I kind of wondered if they were going to go there, and then they did. <clears throat> so, spoilers, but yeah. It, it, if you just want to see what a Fulci gore film is like, definitely check this out. Now, is it as good as Zombie, City of the Living Dead, The Beyond? Uh, uh, let's take a look at his films. Definitely not as good as those. I might say it's better than House by the Cemetery. Definitely better than Manhattan Baby. Uh, I would put this above Enigma. I'd put this way above uh, a Demonia. Not really comparing it to any of his Jolly. But <clears throat> just because it's a very different kind of film. But yeah, if you just want to see a Fulci film with a big volume of effects, definitely check this out. Uh, if you're able to find it. So yeah, I was wondering if they were going to do this just to play into the meta nature of the film. It didn't quite go the way I thought it would, but it kind of did. It shows them all on this boat that looks like the boat from Zombie called Perversion, named after Perversion story. It shows his... I think it's a nurse from whatever point in the film. Oh, so yeah, the psychiatrist also has a wife that hates him. He strangles her with piano wire. Uh, she's like a nurse. Actually, I think it's the psychiatrist nurse. She's on the boat. She goes down in the deck house. He, he follows. And then he comes up with a basket full of her body parts, puts them on fish hooks, showing that he was a killer all along. But then we pan out. We see that there's a film crew and... They're shooting his newest film called Nightmare Concert, which I guess this was uh, also released as in, in some areas. It, it even says it in the, the main title, the main menu in the opening credits. It says Cat in the Brain, Nightmare Concert. <clears throat> so yeah, he's shooting a new film. I thought it was going to be like, oh, the whole thing is a movie. They're making a movie about him making a movie. And going crazy. But no. Just at this point in time. Showing him that he killed someone. 
that's a movie. It did have an alternate ending where, which I guess the uh, Italian distributors had this idea, where they don't show the film crew. He, he just follows her down to the deck house and then we hear a scream, roll credits, to show that he is a killer. But I, I do like the meta uh, original ending. Now, did this work on the level that, say, New Nightmare or Scream did? No. But you can definitely see where they're going with it. They're having fun with it. It definitely does have a surreal, dreamlike quality to it. The hallucinations look like hallucinations. They did do a good job at making it look, you know, surreal and unnatural. <clears throat> and, yeah, I know he will go on to do some films after this. But just the nature of this film, him playing... Uh, I know he's had a cameo in a lot of his movies. But, you know, being the main character in this one about, you know, making movies and how he's the horror guy and the toll it's taken on his mind. This would have been a great swan song. But again, I know he did several films in the 90s that are not as good. Or so I've heard. I mean, not even talked about. But it, uh, I guess you kind of can look at this as his swan song. I believe this was one of his direct-to-video films. Maybe even his first. No, because I think Touch of Death is... Sonoma's Ghost were directed video as well. But yeah. And again, I'm not sure how much exactly is original or if they literally just did the opening shot, closing shot, and then rearranged everything in the middle. If they did that, then somehow <coughs> they took two movies, spliced them all completely, you know, completely comprised of two movies, mixed all together. And somehow it's more coherent than some of Fulci's other films. Which I guess would be more of a testament to uh, the editor. But I, I did enjoy this. I did have a lot of fun with it. It's not quite the gag reel of effects. And like a best of Fulci like some people have called it. Really because it doesn't have any footage from his major films. But it, did, it does make me want to go check out those other movies. <coughs> Not just because they're by Fulci and I haven't seen them, but just because they do, you know, they, they look just as if not gorier than some of the other ones, most of the other ones I've seen. So yeah, I would say the only other major Fulci film that I have left to review would be Zombie 3, because then after that you get into his TV and directed video films. But yeah, Really should have been Fulci's final film. It, it definitely has that swan song feel, and I had a lot of fun with it. So a bit random, but I'm glad I finally saw it. So anyway, uh, and you can go to the Fulci and Italian Horror playlist and check out all the other films I've done. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Oh!